When you see an Umbreon, you're thinking, damn, this thing is going to be incredibly annoying and just stall my entire day out. But I have a different use for the GOAT of Eeveelutions. This thing has incredible bulk with its base 110 defense and 130 special defense, and its best use is definitely support. But what if we tried to make it fully offensive as a physical sweeper? We can help out its embarrassing 65 attack by set up with Curse, and with already insane special bulk, we can boost attack and defense to make it harder to kill, and just become an offensive threat with Stab Throat Chop. Terra Fairy can cover for its weaknesses, and also give some good damage with Fairy Terror Blast in the process. It's got reliable recovery with Moonlight to stay healthy, and I just think Umbreon is an amazing Pokemon, but always just ends up being boring to play, so we're going offensive. Alright, look, I can almost guarantee you've never seen a fully offensive Umbreon try to get a sweep. And I can also tell you why, and that why is because it's a bad idea. <laughs> that 65 attack, it doesn't really go a long way. However, I am determined, and it seems like a fun thing, and uh, that's what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and uh, I'd love to have you be part of the journey. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Dragonite, at least, I think. Now, I decided to lead off with Pepto Abysmal Monkey, and the Ambipom is in kind of a weird spot here. Now, I want to go for the Fake Out, and uh, it could be a bad idea if it is the Hisuian Zarark. Turns out, it's not. It's just straight up the Dragonite, and also, thank God it's not Inner Focus. I mean, most of the time, or pretty much 99% of the time, they're Marvel Scale, and so at least that is going to work out for us pretty nice. The Fake Out is important because it does break that Marvel scale, and now we can start hitting old bad boy for some damage here. So I decided to go for the U-turn. Monkey doesn't really have much business, you know, no monkey business <laughs> staying in here. So I can go for the U-turn there, get a nice little pivot. And a, a Dragonite lead is always threatening a potential just early setup. Now, I have the Dawn Fan in the back, and this is actually a perfect situation for it because they are going to go for the Dragon Dance kind of like we expect here. And uh, I have a nice little answer to that in the form of the red card. So with my sturdy ability, plus just the absolute bulk that this thick-ass Dawn fan has, I know that I can take an attack even at plus one here. And then that's actually, if it touches me, it's going to have to be drawn out from that red card. So they're just going to go right for the outrage here, get as much damage as possible. Knocks me down quite a bit, and then Dawn fan's like, hold on, blows the whistle and tells his ass to get on out of here. That's going to switch the Dragonite out into a random team member, which is always fun to just go for the knockoff here, knowing that something's going to come in. And it actually drags out the Alolan Ninetales. And that's you know, not really the guy we want to see here, especially being with Donphan. But the knockoff is actually really nice, because that's going to get rid of this thing's Light Clay. And I know the shenanigans that this asshole gets up to, and that is going for Aurora Veil. So at least getting rid of that Light Clay I, uh, it can kind of hinder the at least the screams there. So, at this point, I kind of feel like they're going to go for the Aurora Veil, expecting something like a switch, but instead they actually just go for the Blizzard, and that is going to take care of the Dawn Fan. So with Dawn Fan down, it's uh, kind of unfortunate, because you know I call that boy the, the sweep blocker. I just used my red card at least, and I'm fine with that. I wasn't able to set up my Stealth Rock, which is unfortunate, uh, but we got rid of the Light Clay, and honestly, I'm kind of fine with that. So... I decide now to just go into the Ambipom here. I know that I'm going to be faster. A combination of a fake out and a double hit looks like something I'm interested in. And it turns out they're actually just going to switch that thing out. So that thing switching without setting up the you know, Aurora Veil is fine. But they decide to go into the Xbox 360 looking ass Metagross. Turns out it's not a Metagross because the fake out uh, actually just goes right through him. So yeah, I, I know that this is obviously the Zorark at this point. And I'm actually also kind of fine with this. I figure maybe they actually switch here fearing a knockoff. So I decide to go for the U-turn as a nice little middle ground play here. Now they are going to stay in, and the U-turn here was actually mostly just because I figured this is probably going to be Focus Sash. So breaking that Focus Sash, but also uh, tucking the Ambipom in the back is just really good pressure all around. So at this point, I'm feeling like, hold on a second, Umbreon is the perfect boy to send in here. I can go into Shiny Umbreon, looking amazing, and also I know with my just natural special bulk, I can take Hyper Voices all day. And... To try to get this thing to work, I really need something that I can set up on and potentially scare out. And honestly, this Zorark is the perfect thing because obviously it's probably fearing, uh, you know, a dark move, but also the potential for like wishes and toxics and uh, in general, a special attacker is going to have a bad time. So they're actually going to end up switching out here and they're going to go back into that Dragonite. And I'm totally fine with this because that allows me a nice little free Kurt. I'm out here 
making this thing even slower than it already is. But the upside is now we have a nice little attack boost and a defensive boost is great, especially against things like a Dragonite. So I got a couple of nice little tricks up my sleeve against this Dragonite. So first of all, I know that seeing that this thing wanted to Dragon Dance earlier, it's probably going to try to set up, especially considering it's seen me you know, set up here. So uh, knowing that, you know, Umbreon doesn't pose that much of an offensive threat against it, I figure they're probably going to go for a Dragon Dance here. And uh, I'm just going to go for another curse. I feel like this is, I need a couple of them just to get Umbreon's physical attack to a range where it can at least, you know, throat chop its way out of a wet paper bag. So there's the Dragon Dance. I set up myself a nice little curse. And at this point, we're at plus two attack, plus two defense. And speed does not matter when you are just the bulkiest kitty around. So... Uh, I also have a secondary option against this Dragonite, knowing that their best damage is going to be, you know, just a, a nice little stab. Dragon move could be potential for like a Terra Normal Extreme Speed, but at this point their best bet is probably just going for something like an Outrage, a Dragon Claw. So I figure, you know what, I'm going to bust out the Terra Fairy, and there really could not be a better time to do it. So the good thing about Terra Fairy is while it works really well um, just on Umbreon in terms of defensively, but also I really love Terras that can just essentially completely block moves. So having a full resistance to Dragon here is really going to help out. Now they do go for the Outrage and that no longer affects me because I am a fake ass Sylveon. I also am carrying the coverage with that Terra Blast and uh, that is going to Terra Blast this Dragonite right into hell. So <laughs> that takes care of the Dragonite and that worked out perfectly most of all because if this Umbreon starts to take too much chip, it's really going to be hard to sweep with. Slow sweepers in general are tough, but just maintaining HP at this point is kind of uh, the, the best thing I can do. I really am just trying to poke now as many holes in the team as I can with this Umbreon. And also, I do have the support with the Moonlight, so I could get some health back. But they decide to go into the Metagross here. Now being Fairy-type, they go for the Meteor Mash and just straight up Meteor Miss. And that is wildly unfortunate. Now, it does actually end up living the Throat Chop. I uh, even at plus two, but I'm able to do a ton of damage and that miss was pretty clutch. Now I was extremely defensive there. I would have taken it nicely, uh, but at this point they actually just decide to go for the bullet punch that maybe they're just, they've been extremely hoed by that meteor mash and just didn't want to go for it again. They just opted for the guaranteed damage with the bullet punch, but we absolutely eat those bullets for breakfast and it doesn't do you know, a whole lot of damage to us as especially with the leftovers recovery. Umbreon's in a pretty damn good spot. Now, this Umbreon does work in potential positions where people just do not expect Umbreon to start to set up like this, and that's why it's fun. So, now they decide to go into the Alolan Ninetales. What this thing can do is pretty much hit me really hard on the special side with blizzards, but also, in, more importantly maybe, is go for that Aurora Veil. Now, the good news is at least I was able to knock off that Light Clay earlier, so it's only going to stick around for the five turns. Uh, instead of the 8, so that is amazing, and I go for the Terror Blast, it's going to do a nice little chunk of damage even through uh, the Aurora Veil, and after the Leftovers Recovery, I'm feeling pretty healthy here. Now, the best situation is that with the Curses, our physical defense is great, and even without full any investment in special defense, just max HP, we are still so specially bulky, because that Blizzard doesn't even knock us to half, which is honestly amazing. And I'm just going to continue to Terra Blast. And again, my plan is to just continue to throw damage out here with this Umbreon. And also just try to maintain health as much as possible. And that's why Moonlight is super nice. So uh, what Moonlights can do is not only obviously heal me. I know this Blizzard's not going to knock me out. But also it's just going to kind of waste turns of that Aurora Veil. So knowing I can take a Blizzard, really hoping they do not turn my ass into a heart-shaped popsicle with a freeze. Now, luckily they do not. And the Moonlight is going to bring me well above half. After a nice little bite of an apple after leftovers, we're feeling pretty solid here. Now, I do want to go for some damage here because, honestly, the more times they, chances they get to go for blizzards, the better chance they're going to get to freeze me. So, I just decided now to go for that Terror Blast. I'm feeling like at the health I'm at after this turn, I should be able to take an attack from kind of whatever and then dish out some more hot Umbreon damage. So, <laughs> that takes care of the Alolan Ninetales. Don't have to worry about more Aurora Veil once this goes away. And uh, after some recovery, we're looking still relatively good, depending on what they've got for me. So, they now decide to bring in the Keldeo. And uh, this My Little Pony looking ass thing is kind of scary. I honestly figure I probably die to an attack here. Now, they go for a Surf, do a little twirl, and I actually live it with 4 HP. If I'm going to be real, I did not expect to live that. And uh, I fired off the Terror Blast just to see if I could get a kill through the Aurora Veil. Sadly, it does not quite have enough to knock it out. And... 
I believe this was actually the last turn of that Aurora Veil. And the bad news is, I really should have gone for that Moonlight. And uh, I, I truly, I just kind of thought, I thought that this Keldia was going to knock me out there. But I, once again, have underestimated the damn bulk of this crazy Black Kitty. So Aurora Veil is now going to wear off. And sadly, without a Moonlight there, I am uh, not going to have the, the ability to finish this thing off. So one more Surf is going to do it. And uh, honestly, the, the Moonlight there would have been the optimal play. But also, keeping this thing alive, they were surely, surely just going to run. <laughs> that if they didn't uh, grab the kill there. So in the end, it keeps the game going. But now, while Umbreon has done what it could, we, we have a little bit of uh, still a scary endgame on our hands. Now, I decided to go into uh, the Shaman here just because... First of all, I know that I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. Plus, if it's not timid, I actually outspeed, but it is going to be uh, the plus speed nature there. I honestly forgot that this thing gets uh, air slash, and that was a little bit scary because it could have flinched. Luckily, it does not, and also, I don't miss the uh, seed flare, so that's pretty solid. And uh, down goes the Keldia, which is a pretty big threat. So, now they decide to go into the walking wake, which is the main thing that we're afraid of at this point, but also... One thing that tells us it actually is not Walking Wake, while it does go for the Flamethrower, and that's a move that this thing can do, the amount of chip that we have on this thing uh, shows that it's actually the Hisuian Zorark. We, we saw that we got some damage on that thing earlier. I, I think it was just an Ambipom U-turn, but the fact that we just see any amount of chip on this at all just tells us it is the, uh, the Zorark there. There's often quite a few ways to tell if it's going to be a Zorark. A lot of the time, it comes in the form of uh, the amount of Stealth Rock damage it takes. Obviously, I don't have the rocks up, but what I do have is an Ambipom, and this thing is fast enough to go for that knockoff, and it is going to reveal, obviously. It is going to be that Zorark, but the knockoff is great, uh, because it is super effective, and we're able to take care of that thing. So, with that gone, we are still in a little bit of danger here. Now, uh, the final Pokemon is going to be the actual Walking Wake, of course, and this thing is very scary. It's not quite as scary if it doesn't have Sun Support, uh, but as this thing comes in, let me tell you something. So, it actually... It activates the Protosynthesis with the booster energy. Now, while this is happening, I'm completely looking away. I think I was at my second monitor, like, taking notes or something, and I did not see that Protosynthesis activate. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that means it's probably going to be a Choice Specs Wake. I go for the knockoff, and it doesn't knock anything off. And I'm like, well, I completely missed that Protosynthesis. And I'm, first of all, confused, but second of all, I'm like, okay, yeah, I definitely just looked away and <laughs> didn't realize uh, that it was Protosynthesis. But to my surprise, I actually end up living the uh, Dragon Pulse, which is fantastic. Allows me now to go for the U-turn, and Ambipom is kind of going to be the win condition at this point, just because I know that uh, I can come back in later and the combination of like a fake out and like a double hit should be able to finish it off. So it goes for the Flamethrower now as I bring in the Golurk, and this is what we like to call in the business a good old-fashioned sack. Pause. I just basically bring this thing in just to die so that I can get the safe switch back into the Ambipom and we should be able to do it there. At least Ambipom is just barely faster than Walking Wake, which is why if a Protosynthesis speed was active, it would be faster and scary. But I would then be able to just go, go into the Salamence, I suppose, and then just fake out this thing until uh, it dies. So I go into the Ambipom here, I pimp slap him once with the fake out, and it's going to do a whole bunch of damage here. And at this point, we know that we are faster. So the safest option is just to go for that knockoff. Double hit always seems to miss when I need it not to. So a knockoff, we saw the damage from earlier. It's going to be able to finish off the wake. And that is going to be the end of the game. So honestly, a super fun match. And it was cool just to mess around with the team a little bit. So Slapmaster actually gets defeated by the actual Slapmaster, which is Ambipom. And that brings us into our next game, because uh, this Umbreon needs <laughs> to try to get some more going, because it's pretty wild. So, this time we've got a bit of a different team, same Umbreon. Now, my opponent also has a pretty interesting squad over there, and this is a super good match, so let's jump into it. This time my opponent is going to lead off with everybody's least favorite buff fairy, the freaking Grimmsnarl. Call this, <laughs> call this thing Jorgen... Was it Jorgen Van Strangler or whatever from Fairly Odd Parents? That's a fire nickname right there. Anyway, this time I decided to lead off with the Smeargle because I can put this thing to sleep and avoid, you know, it's light clay sh screen shenanigans. But instead, it actually goes for the trick, which is honestly refreshing to see. It gives me a lagging tail, and <laughs> my tail may be lagging, but these, painting these paintings are about to go crazy. I go for the Spore, and that is going to put it to sleep, which is nice because... This weird dog's main goal is to set up hazards. I'm, I'm just a hazard machine out here. And also, I can do it in the process of getting like a little bit of tiny baby damage because I have the stone axe to obviously set up the stealth rock here and I can do pretty much no meaningful chip, but it's fun to let Smeargle do moves that he's not supposed to. Now also, 
It feels like they don't have hazard control over there, so I decided to go for the sticky web. And while yeah, this team doesn't really rely on sticky web that much, it's still just going to be good support. So it actually ends up waking up. Call that the quickest nap ever, and it does paralyze me. How slow do you want my freaking Smeargle to be? I now have a lagging tail and paralyzed. And also, they took my Focus Sash away from me. So I'm like, you know what, if I can, I'm going to try to put this bitch back to sleep. But instead, they actually do have the Spirit Break. And I am basically made out of paper bones and glass skin. But wait, it's the opposite. Skin, paper. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Insert SpongeBob reference here. Anyway, while I do not know how to talk, I do have an Electrode that knows how to do some damage. Because I'm Choice Specs, and Hisuian Electrode is basically a damn bomb. So, as I'm looking at it here... It doesn't seem like this Grimmsnarl wants to go for screens, and also its Focus Sash is broken by that Stone Axe. So I'm like, you know what actually ends up killing here is a nice little Choice Specs Chloroblast, and I'm not afraid to start blasting. I'm going to go for that. It does end up knocking out the Grim, and at the cost of knocking down half of my own HP, I take care of the Grimmsnarl, which is always a good fella to see gone, even if it's not the usual uh, dual screen. So that is pretty solid. I am, however locked into the Chloroblast as they decide to go into the Kilowattro. And while this thing does take some uh, some nice little Stealth Rock chip, obviously I'm forced to switch here. And I'm thinking, you know, surely they don't go for a Volt Switch here. But if they do, I can actually just go into uh, the, the Homeboy Zapadash. Best case scenario is they try to pivot and hit me with a Volt Switch, activating my motor drive. And uh, they also can't really hit me with like an Air Slash. So it turns out they actually go for the Tailwind. And uh, that's going to make a little bit of an interesting dynamic. It actually also activates this thing's wind power. And that's actually kind of good news. Because what that tells me is it's not going to be Volt Absorb. And I'm free to hit it with a nice little neutral Thunderbolt. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do over here. I'm a crazy-ass zebra. And I, when, as he goes for his little animation there, I kind of wish that he was uh, like black and yellow all the time. But uh, they decide to go into the Mamoswine. It is a good play. This thing comes in, takes some Sticky Web right to the tusks, and obviously I can't affect it with that Thunderbolt. So, at this point, Mamoswine's kind of a weird speed tier. It's behind Tailwind, but it's touched the sticky webs, and I'm like, you know what I can actually do here is just go right into the Milotic. So, this is a Milotic I've made a video about. If you're interested, you should definitely search up Milotic on my channel. It is basically a physical attacking setup Dragon Dance Milotic, and as I come in here on a Mamoswine, I'm kind of trying to bluff the fact that I'm just going to be a defensive one. Now, it turns out they actually have the Trailblaze, and that does nearly half to me because I'm not defensive, and that's actually kind of bad, as I don't really have switch-ins to this. I, I want to get Umbreon in on this, but I don't want to come in on an attack here. So I just decide, I, you know, I can live one more Trailblaze here, so I can actually have a chance uh, to go for that Hypnosis, and putting it to sleep would really be nice. But it turns out they're actually going to go for the Terra here, and worst case scenario for me, it is going to be the Terra Grass, because... That's going to give it a nice little stab boost to that Trailblaze. They see that that's going to allow them to grab the kill here. And also get it to plus two attack with the Sticky Web behind the Tailwind for, what, like one more turn. This Mammoth Swine's going crazy over here. And <laughs> at plus two speed, it is going to be yeah, quite fast. Uh, except for the fact, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, it is pretty quick at this point. Tailwind does go away. It does not have enough physical attack to really threaten a, a setup Umbreon. So I'm like, you know what, maybe... I bring in the kitty here and try to get Umbreon to do some stuff. This whole team is just full of weird setup and things that are doing stuff they're not supposed to do, and Umbreon's going to try to do it here. So, as I bring this thing in here, I realize, you know, Earthquake's probably their best damage. It's not going to quite do enough. I can curse and then Moonlight up, but they decide to actually just switch that thing out, and they're going to go into uh, the Hisuian Samurai here. So, as uh, the weird little Narwhal fella comes in, takes some nice little, little chip from the Stealth Rock, and also Sticky Web. It's not really going to matter for the speed here because Umbreon just goes straight for that curse. Drops my speed, but also gives me that nice little uh, sweet, sweet attack and defense boost. And I know what this thing wants to do. Probably wants to go for that Sacred Sword. It's going to do a lot of damage even through a plus one defense. And I'm like, hmm, I could commit the Terra here. It's kind of an interesting play if I do. I decide, you know what? I've made it this far. Umbreon's going to try to get something going here. I'm going to go for that Terra Fairy. It is now going to allow me to... Not only, you know, resist the the incoming likely Sacred Sword, but also give me an opportunity to get up a second curse. The thought process is I definitely need all the offensive firepower that I can get with this Umbreon. Uh, and uh, also, I can just Moonlight off the damage. So, uh, as they do go for that Sacred Sword, try to slice my ass, not going to end up happening. The, the Fairy Terra is going to allow us to basically take no damage from that and go for another curse. So, we're actually in a fantastic spot, and honestly, Fairy Terra... 
It just synergizes super well you know, with the Zombreon. So not only does it give us the defensive position, but also uh, I now have the super effective Terra Blast. And after Leftovers, we are looking healthy. So with two curses up, I'm feeling like I don't want to get super greedy. I'm just going to go for that Terra Blast. They're going to just Ceaseless Edge. They actually, uh, while they know it's not going to be very effective, they just kind of opt for a little bit of damage and set up some spikes. And uh, this thing does take that Life Orb chip. And now I just start blasting. The, the Fairy Terra Blast once again coming in clutch this time against the old Dark type. And that is going to knock out uh, the Samurai out there. So that thing out of the way is great. I do not have the ability to get rid of spikes, so I'm just going to try to see how far we can get this Umbreon to go. And uh, I'm honestly, I'm looking pretty healthy, and I have literally double defense at this point, so I'm feeling feeling good. So, now they get a switch into whatever they like. They decide to go into uh, old Longneck over here. They go into the Frigograph, mostly just because with my defenses, they probably just want to try to hit me on the special side. And I don't really know what this thing wants to do. So, I'm just going to go for the Throat Chomp. Seems hilarious because this thing literally has the biggest target for a throat chop ever and it'd also be really funny to throat chop and allow them to not be able to hyper voice for two turns but turns out they actually go for the thunder wave that's going to paralyze me to try to uh, nullify the <laughs> the freaking umbreon sweep but i break through the paralysis after synchronizing it just paralyze it right before we kill it and uh, absolutely chop that thing's throat in half and down goes the ferrigraph which is amazing because that thing didn't do any damage to us and we're still sitting well above half uh, however, the para is annoying because uh, all it's going to take is just a few continual attacks here and if I get y paralyzed on any of them, it's going to have a bad time. So, they decide to go back into the Kilowattril here. I know that a Throat Chop likely kills and uh, their best damage is going to be in the form of Electro Ball. I actually end up living because Umbreon is a spe special defensive goat and <laughs> I can actually break through the para and finish that thing off with a tro throat chop, which is honestly insane. I kind of expected that Electro Ball to kill. It's a, a move that's based off of, uh, its damage is based off of how much faster they are than you. And I'm not sure if that actually takes into account the para. You would imagine it would. Plus I have two curses. I have literally like, my speed stat is like three right now. So the fact that that doesn't kill just shows that Umbreon is an absolute beast. And now they are down to two Pokemon left. It's gonna be the Infernape along with uh, the Mamoswine, who is Terra Grass in the back. So, Infernape comes in, goes for a Raging Fury, because I would be raging as well if this Umbreon was doing this to me. And sadly, <laughs> that does uh, just take care of me. So, Umbreon honestly put in the absolute work and allowed us a win condition here with the two Mons left. I'm feeling confident. So, I can go into the Electrode here. Obviously, outspeed and a Choice Specs Thunderbolt is going to be enough. Uh, to knock this thing out. I do run the risk of being mock punched, but I'm like, you know what? I kind of just have to go for that T-Bolt. Uh, I do outspeed and they actually disconnect, which is honestly kind of surprising. Now, they actually end up living the Thunderbolt because the animation still goes even though they turn their switch off. Um, but uh, the Raging Fury comes through. I'm honestly curious if that was choiced or not, but uh, with the disconnect there, that is going to be the end of the match, but it's actually interesting because with the Mamoswine, it, uh, its best bet would have been like Ice Shard against my Haxorus in the late game, but I, I would have taken like 50% from that and been able to knock it out. So regardless, I think I had the tools in the back to win the game, but maybe that was honestly, it could have just been a straight up uh, like Wi-Fi disconnection there. <laughs> I have no idea, but all I know is physical Umbreon deserves respect. Thank you.